Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about J motility. Now what is a pacemaker cell in J tract? We have a pacemaker in our heart that is SA node. In the same way, we have a pacemaker cells in our JT tract which gives the action potentials and depolarizes the smooth muscle cells and causes the contraction of the J smooth muscles. So what are the, what are the pacemaker cells? The pacemaker cells are called as interstitial cells of Kajal. Okay, so interstitial cells of Kajal are the pacemaker cells and from where these interstitial cells of Kajal are starting guys, they are not starting from esophagus, they are starting from the greater curvature of body of the stomach. Okay, so ICC interstitial cell of Kajal starts from greater curvature Okay, they start from greater curvature especially from body region of the stomach. Now let's see what is the resting membrane potential of these pacemaker cells. Guys remember the, pacemaker, the pacemaker cells do not have the resting membrane potential but they do have a restless membrane potential. See the pacemaker cells are having restless membrane potential. What is this restlessness? We will discuss now. I am showing you the restless membrane potential now. Let's take normally the pacemaker cell is having a potential of minus 60, minus 60 millivolts. What happens from minus 60, the potential will go to minus 40. So in the pacemaker cells, normally what happens? Whenever the a sympathetic nervous system is dominating, whenever you haven't ate any food, during sympathetic activity, what happens is, the potential will move from minus 60 to minus 40 again it comes back it goes to minus 60 to minus 40 again it will fall down so there is this restlessness okay the cell is not having resting membrane potential of minus 60 no from minus 60 it is going to minus 40 it's coming back again it goes to minus 40 it comes back so there is restlessness in the membrane potential this is not the action potential because of this rhythm there is no contraction of the GI muscle now what happens sir whenever there is parasympathetic activity or whenever there is a raise of acetylcholine then only there will be development of these spikes okay what are these spikes these spikes are the actual action potentials so these spikes are called as spike potentials Okay, spike potentials which are actual action potentials. Then what are these things which are present in yellow color, this rhythm? This is called as basal electrical rhythm. So BER. So BER, is it action potential? No. What is action potential? Spike potential is a action potential. So the three important points which you need to keep in mind here is, see the basic electrical rhythm which is all the time seen during resting state but whenever the parasympathetic activity is there, whenever you eat the food, then these spike potentials are going to be created. Whenever these spikes are there, then only muscle contractions will happen. Now you can have it out. Here there are only two spikes. Here there are three spikes. Here there are four spikes. What is the difference? Will there be any difference in the muscle contraction? Yes, there is a difference in the muscle contraction, which we will discuss in a minute. But important point is, this yellow color line, this rhythm is called as a basic electrical rhythm, which are not the action potentials. And during this phase, there is no muscle contraction. Okay. Now, let's see here. What is the difference between the spike potential? Two spikes, three spikes, four spikes. What is the difference? See, he, this is the normal basic rhythm. Okay, basic electrical rhythm. Change in the membrane potential. Whenever there is this, like, you know, basic electrical rhythm, is there is any contraction in the muscle? See, this is the muscle, like, you know, muscle contraction, contractile force. Is there is any contraction in the muscle? There is no contraction in the muscle. But whenever parasympathetic nervous system is activated, upon this BER, there are these spikes coming. These spikes I have taught you, they are the action potential. Whenever there is an action potential, immediately the contraction is increased. See, the more the number of spikes, more powerful will be the contraction. For example, here see, there are only two action potentials. When there are two action potentials, there is a small wave, means a little contraction. 
more the number of spike potentials or more the number of action potentials more powerful will be the contraction more tonic will be the contraction okay that's the difference guys okay after this let's talk about from where the br is starting the basal electrical rhythm is starting from see basal electrical rhythm is a property of pacemaker cells from where the pacemaker cells are getting started they are starting from body of the stomach greater curvature and they extend till to the colon okay so br starts from greater curvature greater curvature of body of stomach okay so they are going till to the colon okay guys now let's see what is the br frequency the br frequency in different different parts of intestine is different now in the duodenum the br frequency is 12 per minute means 12 action potentials are getting produced per so not action potential 12 waves are coming in a minute uh, in ileum the br frequency is 8 waves per minute and in cecum the br frequency is very less 2 per 2 minute 2 waves per minute so this is a br frequency in different different parts of the intestine why i am saying this is because these are previously asked questions now let's discuss about the real gi motility so far what we have seen yes gi motility but which motility electrical motility in the pacemaker cells we are seeing the electrical fluctuation or the electrical movement but right now we will see the mechanical movement the first mechanical movement which we are going to discuss right now is a called as a peristalsis okay now peristalsis is all the time ab oral okay so the contraction the wave of contraction is all the time moving away from the stomach the only place in the body where the natural anti peristalsis happens is the ascending colon in the ascending colon the contraction is happening towards the mouth so this is natural anti peristalsis will happen here okay so just keep that point in mind but peristalsis is all the time aboral in nature and peristalsis is initiated by stretch okay it's initiated by the stretch stretching will cause the initiation of the peristalsis by activation of the myentric plexus now see what is something special about the peristalsis guys there are different types of gi motility the first type of motility which we are going to discuss right now is called as peristalsis later we will discuss about the segmentation later we will be discussing about the migratory motor complex but how to identify whether the gi motility is peristalsis or segmentation please concentrate here i am showing you this is your GIT tract, GIT tract. Now in this GIT tract, now I am asking you whether the person is fed or not. Yes, this is the food. This is the food bolus. Now this food bolus should have to move in anti-grade direction. There should be the propulsion of the food. For propulsion of food, which type of movement is needed? Peristalsis. And what is that peristalsis? See the proximal part of GIT tract. Okay, this one. Let me show you here. The there is this proximal area. and there is this distal segment the proximal segment need to be contracted why why because there shouldn't be any regurgitation back so the proximal segment is contracted and the distal segment so this area the distal segment need to be relaxed the distal segment need to relax and receive the food the proximal segment need to contract prevent regurgitation back okay so for that what are the neurotransmitters involved see the proximal segment is getting contracted because of substances like acetylcholine and substance p so these substances are acting on this area proximal area causing contraction now i have taught you that distal segment need to be dilated to receive the food so what are the substances which are causing dilation of the distal segment so dilation is under the control of nitric oxide is one important substance and vasoactive intestinal peptide is also going to cause the dilation 
okay so this is peristalsis because of peristalsis what is the important thing happening guys there is propulsion of fluid movement of fluid okay in a anti-grade way now let's talk about a different type of GI motility which is called as segmentation remember this segmentation is the most common and major the major GI motility I shouldn't say most common major GI motility is segmentation now what happens in segmentation very simple see the prog the, the person is in fed state he is having food in his intestine there is contraction of proximal segment as well as distal segment now the food is placed in a small pocket there is this one small pocket where the food is present the food is not moving anteriorly and the food is not even be, uh, going back so what's happening now now this is the place where food is getting digested food is getting mixed and digestion so mixing of the food digestion of the food is because of which GI motility it's because of segmentation so segmentation helps in mixing mixing of food and helps in digestion now which GI motility is helping in propulsion of food peristalsis in peristalsis both the proximal segment as well as distal segment both are contracted in segmentation the proximal segment sorry uh, in peristalsis both uh, the, the proximal segment is contracted the distal segment is relaxed now here in segmentation both the proximal segment as well as distal segment are contracted okay now segmentation is a major GI motility don't forget now let's talk about something called as migratory motor complex which is also J motility but this is happening in a fasting state okay occurs during fasting okay there is no food in your J tract now what happens in this MMC migratory motor complex a contraction will start from stomach and the wave of this contraction is going till to colon a powerful wave of contraction is generated from the stomach and this wave is moving till colon why this is happening if there is any leftover food if there is any remnants present like you know uh, uh, undigested food particles if there are if, if any such things are present they need to be cleared the GAT need to be cleaned and clear for the upcoming meal new meal so this is acting like a sweeper of the JT. It's acting like a broomstick of the JT. Sometimes whenever you are uh, like you know doing fasting, you will feel that pain, right? That pain is because of this. You can feel the contractions. Those contractions are nothing but the migratory motor complexes. So cleans the JT. So this is called as broomstick. Broomstick or sweeper. okay so broomstick or sweeper of the JT and this migratory motor complex is the one responsible for hunger pangs now I have taught you this migratory motor complex is preparing the JT for what it prepares the JT for next meal It is cleaning the JIT. Now, this one, uh, like you know, with what frequency these migratory motor complexes are, like you know, are generated. Migratory motor complexes are generated. One migratory motor complex is going to be seen in every 90 minutes. So, what I am trying to put into your mind is, even without food, your JIT is contracting. So, that contraction is called as a migratory motor complex, which is a powerful wave of contraction, which I have originated from the stomach. And this migratory motor complex will go till to colon and this uh, MMC is mediated by motilin we have discussed right motilin which is produced from the M0 cells acts on motilin receptors helps in GI motility and gastric motility that thing okay so migratory motor complex all points are completed now let's have a summary guys in your GIT how many types of motility are there there are two types of motility one is electrical motility the electrical motility is called as basal electrical rhythm okay that's the resting uh, restless membrane potential and how many types of mechanical motility are there the, mainly the mechanical motilities are divided into two types what are they mechanical activity which is happening during fasting state fasting so during fasting what will happen there is migratory motor migratory motor complex okay mechanical contraction is happening during fed state 
how many types of j motility are possible there are two types of j motility possible what are they one is peristalsis and one more thing is segmentation okay and who is major j motility segmentation with this we have completed the topic of ga motility see you in the next video